Hi everybody. This is going to be an example of how to solve a global extrema problem. So this problem we've actually seen before. It was on uh, one of the handouts I made, uh, but we never actually finished solving this in class. So we'll go over it here now. So the question asks you to find the global extrema of the following function. f of xy is x squared plus y squared plus x squared y plus 4. And I give you the domain uh, of all points x, y, whose absolute value of the x-coordinate is less than or equal to 1, and the same for the y-coordinate. Right, so with any global extrema problem, there are going to be three steps. First step, graph the region. Second step, find the critical points of the function on the region. And of course, you'll also evaluate those function, the function on those points. And step three is to evaluate the function on the boundary of D. So the extreme value theorem is what gives us these uh, final two steps. All right, so let's start by graphing. So first thing, because the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1, and the absolute value of y is less than or equal to 1, that means that both x and y go between negative 1 and 1, which means the graph of d is going to be a square. The x values have absolute value between uh, 0 and 1, and so uh, the x itself must be between negative 1 and 1, and the same for the y's. They also go between negative 1 and 1, and there's no connection between the y's, so uh, it's completely, they're completely independent of each other. All right, so we have our graph of the region, so we're only interested in what the function does on this region, nothing outside of it. All right, so the second step, we have to find the critical points of our function. All right, so the critical points are going to occur when the gradient either is not defined or the gradient is zero. So let's see, the gradient is, well, let's see, that's the partial derivative in the x direction, that's 2x plus 2xy, and then the partial derivative in the y direction, that'll be 2y plus x squared, and we want to know when it's going to equal zero, right, because it's always going to be defined. So to equal zero, that means that each component must be zero, so 2x plus 2xy is zero, and x squared plus 2y is zero. Well, the first one tells you that, well, if we factor out a 2x, the 2x times 1 plus y is 0, and the second one will tell us that uh, 2y is negative x squared. All right, well, let's look at this first one. It could be 0 if x is 0. If x is 0, well, then this equation tells you that y is 0. And it could also be that y is negative 1 over here. That would give you a 0. And if y is negative 1, then 2y is negative 2, and so x squared would be plus or minus the square root of 2. All right, so we're going to get three critical points. Uh, it could either be 0, 0, coming from this case, or if y is negative 1, x has two choices, either positive root 2 or negative root 2. So those are our three critical points. And let's put them into our, our graph of d. So the three critical points were 0, 0, which is in the middle, root 2, which is about 1.41, comma, negative 1, and negative root 2, comma, negative 1. Notice these critical points are outside of the region D. We don't care about them. All we care about is this critical point at 0, 0. We evaluate F at it. And we get that F of 0, 0 is 4. Right, so we've completed step 2. We've evaluated the function on all the critical points within D. Now we'll check the boundary. So what we'll do is we'll label each side of this square, call this one 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. And the first thing we'll do is we'll evaluate f along, say, side 1. All right, so remember our function, uh, or rather, okay, let's look at side 1 here. So first, uh, along side 1, the y value is always negative 1. So the points that we get all look like some x comma negative 1. And what x is? Well, they run from negative 1 to 1. All right, so our function is given by this. And, well, along that side, side 1, we know that the y value is always negative 1. So everywhere I see a y, I'm going to put a negative 1. So along side 1, I get x squared plus negative 1 squared plus x squared times negative 1 plus 4. And, well, you notice here, uh, x squared minus x squared, that's 0. Negative 1 squared plus 4 is going to be 5. So actually our function is constant all along this bottom side. It's always equal to 5. 
So we'll, we'll just mark, note that. Our function is five at the corners, and then this equality is just a notation here saying it's equal everywhere along that boundary. All right, so let's look at side two. Along side two, let's see what happens. Well, the x value is always one, so our points look like one comma y, where now y goes between negative one and one. Our function, remember, looked like this, is going to reduce nicely because the x is always one along that side. So everywhere I see an x, I can put a one. And so I'll get that f of x y along side 2 is 1 plus y squared plus y plus 4 or y squared plus y plus 5. Alright, now this is a little more complicated than the constant function we got last time. Let's do a little graph of this function. So between negative 1 and 1, well y squared plus y plus 5 is a parabola and we're getting this part of the parabola. The vertex is going to be at negative a half. And remember, you can either remember the formula uh, negative b over 2a for a quadratic, uh, in which case you get negative 1 over 2 here, which is what we get. Or you could note that uh, if you put in e either y equals 0 or y equals negative 1, uh, you'll get the same answer out of this. And since a parabola is symmetric, the vertex must be in the middle, which is at negative a half. Either way, uh, you get the vertexes here, so the graph is decreasing until you get to negative a half, and then it turns around and increases again. Right? So the lowest point is going to be at the vertex, and the highest point will actually be over here when y equals 1. Okay, so we can put that into our graph. All right, there's our point where y is negative a half, and the value of the function is 4.75. It increases in both directions, because remember this was the vertex of the upward facing parabola. Uh, on one corner, of course, the value is still 5, and then at the other corner you get 7, which is now the highest uh, along this line segment. Alright, let's move on to the third side. Alright, on the third side, well, let's see, all the x values, well, they, they range, the y value is always equal to 1. So our points look like x comma 1, where x goes between negative 1 and 1. Okay, again, we go back to our function. Now the y value is 1, so we can put that in for y everywhere. And we'll get x squared plus 1 plus x squared plus 4, which will be 2x squared plus 5. Okay, let's go back to that little diagram we drew, because we've got another parabola here. Oh, maybe we, we skip by it. There we go. All right, so on the interval negative 1 to 1, this parabola looks like this. This isn't a big surprise. Forget the plus 5 for a moment. Forget the 2. This is just x squared. Okay, this makes it run a little faster, and this vertically shifts it up. So it's a pretty easy one to graph. And you know that the vertex is still at 0. All right, so this will be your minimum point along that line segment. And, of course, you'll have maxes at the endpoints. So we just need to compute what those endpoints are. So in the middle, we know we got that min, and the value ends up being 5. And if we check the endpoints, well, we already knew this one was 7. And on this side, it also turns out to be 7. This isn't a huge surprise, because our function was 2x squared plus 5. It doesn't matter whether you put in positive 1 or negative 1 for x. Okay, so that just leaves the fourth side to check. And on the fourth side, well, we know that the y values are going to range, and the x value is always going to be negative 1. So our points look like negative 1 comma y. Okay, so we'll put that into our function. So now all the x's become negative 1's. If we do that, we get 1 plus y squared plus y plus 4. And we end up with actually the exact same function as we had for side 2. Now this really shouldn't surprise us. Notice that the only time we see an x here is when it's an x squared. And so if we put in a positive value for x or the corresponding negative value for x, it doesn't change the function. So in fact, all the values on the left side are going to be exactly the same as all the values on the right side. So we can really just copy those over, just changing the x coordinate. So now we'll get this nice uh, vertex of the parabola at negative uh, 1 instead of at uh, 1. And uh, the values are exactly the same on the left as on the right. Okay, so we've checked all four sides. 
we found all the critical points. So this is what our, our domain looks like. This is what the values are at all the possible places we could have maxes or mins. Now we just need to go through and check. So let's look for min. So let's see, 5, that's not the min because 4.75 will be less than 5. Um, there's 7, 5, 7, 4.75, 5. 5. Okay, so 4.75 is the lowest on the boundary, but it's not the global min because, ah, there's this 4 in the middle. All right, so what about the max? Well, we look around 5, 4.75, ah, there's a 7. Actually, there's two 7s, and so those must be... Uh, both global maxes. So in the end we get that our min occurs at 0, 0 and the value is 4 and our max, well there's two of them, they occur at negative 1, 1 and 1, 1 and the max value is 7. Alright, I hope this helps. Please let me know if you have any questions.